Hi friends, my name is Jose Luis Mompel, and today, with my partner in crime, Dr. Juan Lara, we're going to share with you six useful tips to make your sinus lift augmentations safest and more predictable. We're receiving patients every single day in our offices asking for a fix rehabilitation in the posterior area of the maxilla. Sometimes the posterior area of the maxilla can be a little bit tricky. Why? Because long-term edentolins will lead to no bone. Okay, we know we have the sinus in that area and when our patient had lost his teeth a long time ago, that sinus will hypernomatize, it will increase its volume leading to bone resorption and we will not be able to place implants in that area. So we need to do something. We need to augment bone in that zone in order to place implants in a safe and predictable way. The most common way to do it is a sinus lift augmentation. Sinus lift is not a new technique. It's been described some 40 years ago and it's a very safe and predictable technique. But now we're going to share with you six useful tips with you that in our opinion will make your sinus lift augmentation safer and more predictable. Let's go for it. First tip we want to share with you today is what kind of x-ray we need to do a sinus lift. It's absolutely mandatory to have a CBCT. We cannot do it just with a panoramic x-ray. Why? Because with the CDCT, we're going to be 100% sure how much bone in millimeters we have in the area where we want to place our implants. And why is this so important? Because depending on how much bone we have, we will choose either a crestal approach or a lateral approach. In general terms, we can say that when we have less than 4 millimeters, that means from 0, 1, two or three millimeters, we will choose a lateral approach. That means to open a lateral window to access the esnerative membrane, raise the membrane, lift the membrane, and place our bone or biomaterial, okay? But on the other hand, if we have four or five millimeters, we can go for a crystal approach, okay? Either using Densa burns or uh, any other devices that have been described to raise the membrane from the crystal area. So it is important to take a very careful look to our CVCT in order to analyze how much bone we have because the complications and the post-op will be very, very different. Crystal approach in general terms is much safer and with a very mild post-op in compared to lateral approaches. This doesn't mean that lateral approaches cannot be done or should not be done. No, they have to be done when they have to be done, okay? As I told you, in general terms, less than four millimeters, we go for lateral. More than four millimeters, we go for crystal approach. The second tip we have to keep in mind before doing a sinus lift is the state of the sinus. We need a clean sinus. We cannot perform a sinus lift when we have a sinusitis or when we have a full occupied sinus. How are we going to know if the sinus is clean or not? The sinus is clean when we see a black image. A black image in the CVCT means that the sinus is empty, it's only full of air. If we can see anything else that is not black, that means that we have an occupied sinus. An occupied sinus can be sinusitis full of pus, an hemosinus full of blood, or maybe a cyst, maybe a polypose, or many other reasons. So, keep in mind that we need a black sinus to know that the sinus is clean. And this leads to our third tip, how the sinus become clean. The sinus becomes clean because of the sinus ostium. What is the sinus ostium? The sinus ostium is a little conduit we have up in the sinus that clean all the mucosa that the sinus produces to the nasal cavity. We need a permeable sinus ostium to have a clean sinus. 
in some situations we can have a sinus ostium blocked that is going to lead to a sinusitis why because the sinus get full of mucosa that cannot be clean through the sinus ostium and once the sinus becomes full then the sinusitis becomes now we have an infection the fourth tip that we want to share with you today is the design of the window when doing a lateral approach this is very important let's start from the beginning what kind of device can we use to open this window we can use either the piezo device the piezo device is very very safe although it's kind of slow second thing or second tool that we can use is a diamond burn it's kind of safe because when you touch the membrane we will not tear it but it's also a little bit slow and the third tip is a tungsten a carbon tungsten burn it's kind of fast but on the other hand if you touch the membrane you are risking to tear it okay so any tool has its advantages and disadvantages depending on your skills you can go for one or the other another important thing about the window design is the shape of the window okay it is better to have a narrow window and kind of horizontal rather than a very 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 big window okay because the smaller the window is the higher the osteogenic potential of the walls is still intact this doesn't mean that we have to do a very very tiny window that will increase the risk of perforation and will be very very difficult to raise or to leave your membrane without tearing okay but in general terms the smaller the better another thing is that you need to have no sharp edges okay sharper edges means high risk of tearing the membrane when lifting it okay so every single time you see a corner you see a sharp edge you need to smooth it in order to prevent from tearing it when lifting the membrane the fifth tip that we're going to share with you today it's what kind of biomaterial are we going to use for lateral approaches we know that we have plenty of articles in the literature talking about 80%, 20%, 50%, make sure we have a lot of opinions on what kind of material is better. In our clinical practice, we like to say that at least we use 50% of autogenous bone, okay? We mix 50-50. Why? Because although you can find in the literature, as I already said, articles saying that with 100% your sinus lip will work perfectly well, which is true, we like to incorporate to that biomaterial the osteogenic capacity of the autogenous bone. We have to keep in mind that autogenous material is the only one that has the three properties which are mainly searched in a material, in a biomaterial, which are osteoconductivity, osteoinductivity, and osteogenicity. So every single time you can use autogenous bone at least 20%, 40% or 50% as we do in your sinus lift with a lateral approach, your results will be even better. You will be able to shorten the times, okay? When you see a mixture of 50-50, in four or five months, you will be able to do your second stage surgery and load your implants. So keep in mind that autogenous bone is our best ally when doing lateral sinus lip augmentation. And the sixth tip is the closure of the bone window to perform a sinus lift. Do we need to close this window? We strongly recommend you to close the window access to avoid future graft extrusion from inside the sinus. How can you close this window? You can place a collagen membrane fixed with pins or also you can use a titanium mesh which is our favorite option with micro screws that will keep that membrane absolutely immobile. Either way, thank you guys for watching us. Hope you've learned a lot with this video. Comment any question that you have and see you next video. Remember, the scalpel on your hand and the prosthesis on your mind.